Uh, hello, Year 10. Uh, sorry I can't be in today. Someone in my household has had to have a COVID test, so I've have having to stay at home. Um, hopefully, if it comes back negative, I can be back in quite soon. Um, so today, we're going to actually look at a case study, and the case study is on Holden S in the northeast of England. And it's a case study looking at um, coastal erosion and the decisions around whether a coastal area is defended or whether a coastal area is allowed to erode and lose land. So it's why is Holderness coastline falling in, into the sea? And this will be a, a case study you can refer to in the exam if you're asked a specific question about an area you have studied. Um, <clears throat> during the lesson, you're going to complete this uh, sheet, which you can see on the screen now. So it's an, an, an A3 sheet and there's different boxes for you to fill out. Um, as I'm going through the PowerPoint and narrating it, I'll ask you to pause at certain points or the cover teacher to press pause at certain points and you can fill in the different boxes. Um, I only get 15 minutes of recording time on, on this particular app. Um, so I'll also accompany it with a, with a um, worksheet. So if there's any bits you've missed, you can then fill that out at the end of the recording. And to start with, the first thing I'd like your cover teacher to do <clears throat> is to actually play and this link here on BBC Bite Size. Um, this link um, will take, take you a video. It's about two farmers, two pig farmers, who live on the Holden S coast. It's a really interesting video clip, lasts about five minutes, and it's about their history from when they brought the farm to the situation they're in now where their actual farmhouse is only 19 metres away from the coastline. And I think it provides a real good bit of context about the area and about the case study. So if you can pause this particular recording now, and then if a cover teacher can um, follow the link, um, to the BBC Education website to play this video. Okay, so hopefully you've watched that video now. Um, and I always feel quite sorry for um, both those people. We could argue that perhaps they were a bit naive buying their farm so close to the edge of, 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 of the cliff. But when they brought it, they brought it in good faith. The, the cliffs weren't eroding at the pace they were now. And obviously they, they stand to lose absolutely everything. So let's have, um, whoops, let's have a bit more of a look at Holderness and where it is then. So as geographers, we should always locate our case study first. So Holderness is in the northeast of England. Um, so if I perhaps go back, we can just see there um, Spurn Point, which is the spit, um, which we also studied. We looked at formations of spits is there. You've got the River Humber coming down here. So zooming in, you can then see this, this lo location here. What I want you to do is to draw a sketch map. So the whole nest coastline is, is all this stretch of coastline here. Um, I want you to draw a sketch map of the whole nest coastline. In an exam, if you're doing a case study, quite often it's a good idea to draw a sketch map. It's a way of showing the examiner um, that you know where the location is, but also you can then, re re you can then refer to it and refer to different towns um, on the case study. Um, I've done an example of a sketch map for you. Um, so you can see the sort of detail that's needed. Um, and there we go, it should be appearing there. So this is the perfect sort of sketch map. You've got the, you've, you've got the main feature there, you've got the shape of the coastline um, where it comes in. You've got some of the main town, towns we'll be talking about, Bridlington, Hornsey, um, Mappleton isn't on that. I'll point out Mappleton later on, sorry, I should have marked that one on. Um, the Holderness coastline is in the northeast of England in Yorkshire. It's a 61 kilometres from Flamborough Head, which is the top part here, all the way to Spurn Head or Spurn Point in the south. So if you pause the video now, and on your A3 sheet, if you want to draw um, a quick sketch map of um, the Holderness coastline. Okay, so welcome back. You should now have the sketch map drawn. Um, apologies, I missed off Mappleton on the map. Mappleton's a, a small village, and it's quite close to Hornsey. You might want to mar uh, mark it on there, just where the, um, the arrow, the cursor, is hopefully showing for you now. Um, so that is there um, where Mappleton should be. So if you want to mark that on your map as well, uh, you, sh you should see a red dot now. So this is what your A3 sheet should be looking like now. Um, you should have your, your, your map in there. So the next bit we're going to look at is why the Holden S line is eroding so, so rapidly. So there's some great pictures here and you can have a look at uh, um, some of the cliffs and what the cliff is made of. You can almost see through the pictures and the colour of the cliffs and it must be made of some sort of clay. Um, you can see it cracking um, in these bits here. Um, whoops, apologies for that, just put that up a little bit too soon. Um, you can see just how, how weak those uh, cliffs look there um, and, and how close they are to that caravan site and those houses. So it's actually the fastest, coast, fastest eroded coastline in Europe. 
Um, the average annual rate of erosion is two metres a year. So two metres of the Holderness coastline is lost every single year. And um, since Roman times, 29 entire villages have actually been lost. And if you look at this map here, you can see um, the orange bit is the bit that's been lost to the sea. And you've got the Roman coastline here, this dotted line. And you've got the names and all those little red dots there are, 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 are one of the 29 towns that have actually been lost to the sea to coastal erosion. So why are they eroding so, so quickly? Well, as I've already suggested, the bedrock is made of a very soft boulder clay. It's known as till. So this material I always refer to as new land. So it was, it was de um, deposited by glaciers about 12,000 years ago. Um, so what happened was the glaciers eroded loads of materials from the mountains as they passed over the UK, these massive ice sheets. And then they deposited all this material on, on the eastern coast of the UK, well, in, at different parts of the UK. So actually, a lot of these towns are what I call a, a, a built on, I suppose, borrowed land, land that wasn't there 12,000 years ago. So in my mind, all the sea is doing, actually, is it's eroding um, the coastline back to where it initially was. This map at the bottom here shows you where the boulder clay is. So this is all the material that was deposited by the glacier. And then behind that boulder clay is the chalk and the um, original coastline and the original geology of the coastline. So reason number one why it's eroding so quickly, the cliffs are made of boulder clay, which is sometimes called glacial till. It's very, very soft. You can even rip it apart with your hands if you were to go up to the cliffs. Um, the other reason why they, this coastline erodes so quickly is that it has a very strong prevailing wind. Um, so very strong prevailing wind. Remember, prevailing wind is the wind that it gets most often. So the direction of wind it gets most often. And a really strong prevailing wind uh, that creates longshore drift that moves material south along the coastline. So there's a lot of longshore drift moving material and moving the beach south along the coastline. So it doesn't end up with a beach to actually defend it. Remember, the best natural defense against coastal erosion is a natural beach. Um, and the third reason, the final reason why this coastline erodes so quickly is because of the long fetch. It's a huge fetch in, in that part of the world, in the northeast, and it gets really strong um, destructive waves. Um, if you watched the BBC clip a little bit earlier, you would have seen some of those waves and just how kind of violent the sea gets in that area. So cliffs made of poor, poor material, made of boulder clay. Um, a lot of longshore drift occurring, moving material further down the coast, so there's no beach to protect it. And then finally, these really strong destructive waves due to a large fetch in the region. So on your A3 sheets now, um, if you can make notes on why the coastline is eroding so quickly. If you press pause on this now, whilst you make your notes. Okay, welcome back. So you should have uh, made those notes on why the whole of Holderness is eroding. So let's look specifically at Mappleton now. So there's Mappleton, it's just south of, Horns, of, of Hornsea. So we're going to focus on Mappleton um, because it's an area they decided to, def to defend and we're going to look at why. So there were only around 50 properties in the area. And in 1990, Mappleton was under threat from losing 13 houses and its main road. Two metres a year was being lost to the sea, resulting in the access road only being 50 metres from the cliff edge at its closest point. Now, we've spoken about the word infrastructure before. Infrastructure is things like roads, electricity cables, schools, hospitals. It's the things that keep countries going. And infrastructure is very important. It's very, very costly to replace and can have knock-on effects if infrastructure is damaged. So because this road was part of the infrastructure of the area and it was of huge economic importance, um, they decided they needed to defend it. So it, the road itself provided access to a range of towns and villages for locals. The Holderness coastline is very, very popular, very um, relies heavily on tourism in, in the summer, and this road is used heavily by tourists, so it's decided it needed to be saved. So on your worksheets now, if you press pause, um, you can tell me on your worksheet what's happening in Mappleton, why does Mappleton need protecting? So the sort of things you'll be looking at are the fact that there's 50 properties, um, it's, it, it's popular with tourists, and therefore it brings a lot of income to the whole area. And the fact that it has this major road flowing through it, which is used by three different groups, by the, by the locals, by the tourists, and also by farmers for access. If you press pause now. OK, so um, hopefully you filled in that part of the worksheet. Now we're looking at what they actually did at Mappleton then to defend the coastline. So you can see Mappleton here. A lovely little picture. You can see some of the houses, um, some of this main road here, the B1242. Um, and it looks like a farm there as well. 
So what they actually did was they built two rock groins in order to trap the sand and to um, prevent longshore drift to move material further down the coast. And they also put some rock armour in place. We can see from above there, we get some rock groin, which and you can see, if you look on this side of the groin, you can see the nice buildup of sand that's actually happening there. And if you look on this side here, you can actually see um, the fact that there is no sand there. Um, so the sand no longer, sorry, I just flicked back there. The sand no longer travels down to this part of the coastline. So the groin is absolutely doing its job, but be thinking about how that's impacted um, the coastline further down. To put rock armour in place, they also um, did some soft engineering. Um, they actually um, slightly reduced the gradient of the cliffs and they um, planted some vegetation into the cliff to try and bind and kind of hold it together and strengthen it. Um, and I think the next slide tells us a bit about that. Yeah, there we go. So in 1991, a coastal management scheme um, cost £2 million was, was introduced. They spent this money as they did not want to reroute the Horn Sea to Withensee Road, um, which would have been very expensive to do. So it was a cost benefit analysis, which was going to be more expensive, defending the area of coastline or rerouting the road. It's always about the money. Um, so hard engineering, um, they put the rock arm up along the base of the cliff and they built these two rock groins in order to kind of trap, trap, trap the sand. Um, these are expensive things to do, um, but they do last quite a long time. Um, the large granite boulders are imported from Scandinavia and deposited by barge along the coast. But do remember when we're putting coastal defences in, it's quite an engineering feat. We're actually trying to build things and do things out at sea and when the sea isn't particularly kind um, when you're trying to build structures. Obviously it's wet, obviously it can get very um, violent the waves, etc. There's only certain times of the day you can actually um, do any work at, at, at the site you're trying to work on. That's one of the reasons why it's so expensive. To put sea defences in because it's, it's a complex building engineering job. They also put some soft engineering in so they, they also relied on slightly more sustainable environmental environmentally friendly ways so they tried to reduce the actual um, gradient of the cliff and they also planted this vegetation which was to try and um, stabilize the cliff and stop the mass movement um, and that's known as cliff stabilization. So again if you want to press pause um, and if you want to record on your worksheet um, the different things they did at Mappleton. Okay so welcome back. Um, there was benefits and there were costs to what they did as in any as in any um, coastal defence situation. The benefits first on this side but Mappleton and the cliffs were no longer at risk from erosion and um, the properties had been saved and the main road remained safe from the risk of erosion so that's one benefit. Second benefit the creation of the groins has created a really nice sandy beach because the rock groins obviously trap the sand. It makes a very nice sandy beach so that's attracted tourists to the area, um, which, which obviously so it has attracted more tourists to the area, which has obviously had a benefit to the economy. And it also means that at high tide, the waves no longer reach as far as the cliffs because the beach is there defending it. But there were some negatives. Um, there was increased erosion south of Mappleton, so you'd have seen um, on the BBC clip, and there's a, another clip later on if you have time as well, you've seen that people further down have been impacted massively um, by this, and, and I certainly believe that um, the rate of erosion was increased further down the coast because of the defence that they put in place at Mappleton. You might see on, on a video clip later about a farmer called Sue Earl who um, lo lost her farm and it ha had to be um, demolished, and it's um, quite, quite a famous story. Um, that, that happened um, when they built the defences at Mappleton. Okay, so you should now have a completed A3 sheet. You should have the reasons why the coastline is eroding, the reasons why Mappleton needs protecting, um, the coastal management response to what they did and the benefits and drawbacks of that. And I have got a little worksheet which your teacher will hand out as well in case you missed anything from that. Finally, um, it's important we consider different viewpoints and there will always be people in favour of defending an area of coastline and always be people against defending an area of coastline. This sheet here, and when I finish talking you can press pause, um, gives um, some examples of different people's opinions. And what I want you to do is to answer a question in your books, in general, who would be in favour of this protection and why? So the local residents, the tourists, etc. And who would be against the protection and why? So people living further down the coast, etc. Once you've finished that, then you have finished this particular case in this lesson. Um, hopefully I will be back in for your lesson on Monday next week. I hope you haven't made fun of me too much on this recording. And um, do remember you've got the um, coast assessment taking place on Tuesday. Go on Google Classrooms. I put revision resources on there and make sure you revise. Um, have a great weekend.